For a moment, pretend that you are a teacher. It doesn't really matter what age group you're teaching or what your subject is. Either way, you are in your classroom teaching your students something. One of them raises their hand and asks you a question about the subject, but you don't know the answer. As a teacher, you need to learn something about the subject that you are teaching. Now let's say that you are a lawyer. You've studied the law for years, but have somehow found your way to committing a crime and you find yourself in trouble. Congratulations! You have found yourself in what we in the literary world would call a situational irony. Situation. Situational irony is when the opposite of what you would expect to see happen in a situation is what happens instead. We wouldn't expect our teacher to not know how to answer our questions. We wouldn't expect our lawyer to end up in a prison cell. We can find situational irony in pretty much everything that we look at in life, or in video games like The Last of Us. Continuing my little series of the best uses of irony in these games, we have reached the last type. My favorite, situational irony, which has appeared in The Last of Us the most. If you watched my previous two videos on irony, then you already know the drill, so let's get right into it. Number 10. Tess went on a journey to bring an end to the cordyceps just to get infected. In the beginning of The Last of Us Part 1, Tess and Joel killed Robert, a man who had given their guns to the Fireflies. The smugglers made a deal with Marlene, who agreed to give them their guns back if they brought Ellie to the Capitol building, but didn't tell them why Ellie was so important. Upon learning that Ellie was immune to the cordyceps and that the Fireflies were trying to find a cure, Joel wanted to head back, but Tess insisted that they keep on going. The group listened to Tess, which would ultimately result in her death as she had gotten bitten on their first night outside of the Boston QZ. She had kept it a secret until the following morning when they had arrived at the Capitol building only to find that all of the Fireflies there had died. Many players were just as shocked as Ellie and Joel were, as nobody had expected her to die so early in the game. If only Tess didn't care so much to save the world, she could have saved herself. Number 9. Lev and Abby became friends as the Seraphites and Wolf went into war. In The Last of Us Part 2, the Washington Liberation Front focused on killing their greatest enemies, the Seraphites, by invading their island. While searching for Owen, Abby was attacked by a group of Seraphites and nearly died. Luckily, she was saved by Yara and Lev, two Seraphites who were considered by the others to be traitors. The reason why the other Seraphites turned on the siblings was due to Lev being trans, which the Seraphites did not support, and Yara helping him escape from them when he was chosen to marry an older man. Abby joined forces with the Seraphite siblings and planned to escape to Santa Barbara to find the Fireflies, but Lev went back to his home to try to speak with his mother, who tried to murder him. By the time Abby and Yara found Lev, he had already been forced to kill his mother in order to defend himself, and the three hoped to get out of the island safely as Wolf's invasion began. Isaac, the wolf's leader, found Abby and considered her a traitor for helping Lev and Yara. He was about to kill all three of them, but Yara sacrificed herself, taking his life instead. Abby and Lev managed to leave the island and formed a close friendship in an unexpected time. Number 8. Joel died when Ellie was trying to forgive him. After Ellie learned that Joel had killed many of the Fireflies in order to rescue her, she felt betrayed and what did nothing to do with him. However, he still did everything that he could for her, and the two of them eventually had a conversation in which Ellie told him that she would like to forgive him. They planned on spending some time with each other the following day to hopefully start the healing process. However, while Joel was on patrol with Tommy, they were attacked by the Salt Lake crew, and Abby slowly and brutally murdered Joel. Ellie found him before he died and begged Abby to spare Joel's life, only to watch her deliver the final blow instead. Ellie had thought they were going to have a nice time together and move past what he had done, but instead she was left with a burning desire to kill Abby and all of her friends so she could avenge Joel. Number 7. The Apocalypse Began on Joel's Birthday Birthdays are supposed to be fun and make people happy. It's a time to celebrate one's life with presents, cake, and in The Last of Us, cordyceps. Joel probably had the worst birthday one could possibly imagine, as it was also outbreak day, when people started becoming infected by the cordyceps. Joel's birthday was already frustrating, as he had to deal with annoyances due to his job as a contractor and stayed up really late. Sometime between 11.50 that night to a couple hours later at 1.48 the following morning, Joel started to learn that the world around him was drastically changing as people became infected. Joel did everything he could to 
to get his family to safety, not caring about anything or anyone else. Unfortunately, they crossed paths with the soldier who shot at them, killing Joel's daughter, Sarah. Joel nor the world would ever be the same after Outbreak Day, and it's sad to think how much happier Joel's birthday should have been. Number 6. Abby and Lev saved Yara's life only for her to die the following day. As I mentioned previously, Yara sacrificed her life to kill Isaac. However, she could have died the day before if it weren't for Lev and Abby. For quote-unquote betraying the Seraphites, Yara was punished by being hit in the arm with a hammer, metaphorically clipping her wings. The injury was so bad that she was about to die, but her brother and new friend managed to obtain the medical supplies she needed just in time. The Seraphite siblings, Abby and her friends, Owen and Mel, were happy that she had survived, not expecting her to end up being attacked by the wolves the following day. Number 5. Sherry died trying to save humanity. Sherry was one of the most important characters in The Last of Us games, being the Firefly who was going to perform Ellie's surgery, which could have resulted in humanity gaining a cure to fight off the Cordyceps. However, Marlene told Joel what Sherry was about to do, causing the smuggler to fight his way past a bunch of Fireflies to rescue Ellie. Sherry tried to stop Joel, believing that Ellie's sacrifice would be worth it, but Joel easily killed him instead and saved Ellie, allowing the world to continue being in the state it was in. Very much like Tess, Sherry died doing what he thought was best for humanity. Number 4. Abby killed Joel after he saved her life. Speaking of Joel's conflict with the Andersons, Abby went on a journey with her friends to avenge her father. Sherry was someone who was important to not only her, but her friends as well, so they also wanted to kill Joel. Abby had temporarily split up from the group when they were near Jackson, and ended up being chased by a huge horde of infected. Joel and Tommy saved her life and teamed up with her, killing a bunch of infected on their way to the house that Abby was staying at. When they got there, Abby and her friends attacked the Miller brothers. She beat Joel up with a golf club and avenged her father. At the end of the day, Joel not trusting others was probably the biggest reason why he stayed alive for as long as he did. Number 3. Ellie wanted to save humanity, but would have needed to die in order to do so. Throughout The Last of Us Part 1, Ellie wanted nothing more than to save others from dying. As the Fireflies believed that they could use her immunity to find a cure, she was determined to locate them, no matter what she had to go through to get there. When she finally found them, they didn't tell her that the surgery they planned to perform would have taken her life, but Marlene, who had known Ellie since she was born, figured that Ellie would have accepted her death. Joel, on the other hand, didn't care to know what Ellie would have chosen. The only thing that mattered to him was that she was safe. He lied to her for years, saying that there were other immune people and that the Fireflies gave up looking for a cure. But when Ellie found out the truth, he knew that she really would have been willing to sacrifice herself for everyone else. Number 2. Ellie Saved Abby Ellie's main goal throughout The Last of Us Part 2 was to avenge Joel. She traveled all the way to Seattle and hunted down members of the Salt Lake crew to get information on Abby's whereabouts. She even put her own friends in danger in the process. When Ellie and Abby finally encountered each other, the wolf nearly killed the immune girl, but decided to spare her life instead. While Ellie did try to live a quiet life for about a year, she ultimately decided to track her enemy down once more, still feeling the need to get her revenge. This second journey led Ellie to Santa Barbara, where the Rattlers had enslaved the wolf. Exhausted, Ellie set Abby free before fighting and trying to drown her, but, just like Abby did, decided to spare her in the end. Number 1. Players had to control Abby. Unlike the other uses of situational irony in The Last of Us, this one directly affects the player. From the moment Abby attacked Joel, many players hated her. After all, she is considered to be one of the most hated characters in video game history. That is why it was so surprising, and for some, upsetting, when players could only continue The Last of Us Part 2 by controlling Abby during the three days that Ellie killed her friends, along with some key moments in her life prior to killing Joel. Fans were divided on whether this made the game better or worse, but either way, this was an incredibly ironic turn of events. And so we have reached the end of my Irony Trilogy. Which type of irony is your favorite, and do you think that The Last of Us uses these plot devices well? Let me know what you think of this video, and if there are any other plot devices you would like me to cover on this channel. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful week.